One of our favorite guests was Professor Pete Weitzner from Chapman University, who's also a contributing writer and editor to the OC Biz Journal, and he is back. And we love we Professor Pete. We are so Pete. excited to ask him a lot of questions about Orange County and looking back and looking forward. So Pete, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, and I love coming here, and I just also want to say, I'm sure this has been, you've had uh, Leisure World TV for how long it's been going? Three years. Three years. I mean, I'm sure all the viewers, 20,000 homes, yeah, could right. appreciate how good the content is, how good you guys are, but I want to tell you, I've been, whether being on the air or taking my students to ESPN, Fox News, CNN, on down, nicest people, most professional, from the moment I'm booked, Aww. seriously. So maybe the folks should, I'd like them to also know that. It's a very professional operation. It's a nice gift, I think, thank to you. the Leisure World thank community. You. Oh, thank, thank you so Now that I've buttered you up, I'm gonna get after you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off nice and we'll dig in. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, that's really, and I have to just give a lot of the credit to Lauren. It's, I knew when I first started this that I was in over my head and I could not do this alone. And I was like, who's the most professional, amazing woman that I know that I really, really want to work with? And it's just been wonderful. It's been since. a dream. It it's really has like been. Anything, yeah. Like anything else, and we start talking about it. it, it's the culture. You can have the greatest mm -hmm. product. You have a nice, big audience. You mm -hmm. focus on them. But if you don't have a happy place, a place people want to go, and it's clear the culture is here. Yeah. yeah. Well, we love it. And yeah, if it attracts people like you, all the better for us. So That's thank right. you. And thank you, you know we have you back anytime we can. I'm always here. <laughs> so well, thank you. let's hear what's happening in yes. Orange County. So, well, I mean, if you look at the, how do you measure how a county is doing? Really one big way to become, and where Orange County does probably as well as any major, they call major metro area, in the country is what's called the lifestyle index, right? Which takes into account the economy, which we can talk about in a bit, but it's also, it's crime, which I think Irvine again, lowest of a major city mm -hmm. in Huntington mm -hmm. as a whole. Arts, which keeps improving here, keeps getting better from the Seagerstrom Center on down. Education, our public schools are, by comparison, very strong, mm -hmm. not to mention the great private schools, K through 12, college. So our lifestyle index, um, is still very good. Economy, two and a half percent jobless rate. It's one of the lowest in the state, one of the lowest That's in the pretty, country. Pretty yeah. If you want to get a job in Orange County, you, could, you can get two yeah. right now. It really is. Home values held up. They're high. They're high. That's kind of a mixed bag, yeah. right? Because we, we, we want to make it more affordable for people to live here. We want our younger generation to stay here. You Absolutely. touched on this the last time we were together, but it is nice to have the value as well so it, it is and so but there's progress on that now that's uh, that's a big challenge for the state mm -hmm. we're 725 on the median the san jose area is second highest that's over a million yeah. and the san francisco is off uh, the chart but off. they pay better up there but so you're exactly mm -hmm. right that we talked about the domestic out migration yeah. of mm -hmm. the that key demographic young people 21 to 44 we've lost about 300,000 people in orange county <sighs> Uh, the good news is a number of the builders, but it's hard, are trying to build workforce housing. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Rancho Mission Viejo, they're doing their last, this is one of the original, right, did Mission Viejo. So they're doing 14,000 homes. It'll be the last thing that they do in Orange County. They're about mm -hmm. 4,000 in. They said a third of their buyers are millennials. They put on a, it was a housing outlook for them the other day. And that's good news. That is but good news. To do it, six foot step backs, 23 homes per acre. In other words, dense, these are yeah. tight. Mm -hmm. And they said in one of the next, some of the next phases, nothing over 2,000 square feet. Right. So hopefully as long as we have jobs and we need better paying jobs, uh, these folks, let's say millennials, but in that age range, age cohort, will start to uh, see Orange County as a place they could stay, that they don't have mm -hmm. to leave and then come back when they've really made their stake and have their families. You want young people that are prime purchasing yeah. and, and look like Palmer Lucky is a great example, right? Mm -hmm. The Oculus guy, right? He sold, the, made several billion, sold it to Facebook. Now he's back. He's doing this virtual wall. He's 26, 27. Yeah. We need those people, especially in this new economy. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because um, I employ a lot of millennials and I have never... What do you think of them? I love them. <laughs> They're brilliant. They like, I've never found, you know, you kind of see this 
you hear the stereotypical, well, they care more about experiences than their jobs, and they care more about, they want to make sure it's, you know, um, that they're environmentally being, friendly. Yeah, they're you know. challenged, and that they're, oh, some of that is true, but I've never found them to be lazy. They work harder than anyone I know. As long as you're stimulating them and providing them with like challenging, mm -hmm. you know, things right. that, that anybody should ask for, then they're just ideal employees. And so I hope that we can make sure that we provide that environment. They are, you know, the future. So I agree. And you want to, they also have to look at Orange. I would ask my students. Now, I'm training students for the TV world, which there isn't much, as you know, of a TV. There's more than you think, because everyone does TV. Mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, Blizzard, biggest software firm in Orange County. They're not a TV studio, per se, but they have a lot of those types of jobs I'm training students for. But the business, the media center is up in LA. So when I ask them, I go, how many do you think you might stay in? And a lot of them are from Orange County. Stay in Orange County when you graduate. In a class of 70, maybe two hands really? go up. And I think a little part of it also is they don't look at Orange County as, as hip enough, right? Mm. We have our spots, Costa Mesa and I, you know, beach communities, but they will do what it takes to go live in Hollywood because that's where the business is and yeah. that is hip enough. And New York is hip enough. That's so true. that's, we got a branding of Orange County that, you know. You're absolutely right. And I would just like to say to all of you politicians out there, <laughs> you've got to keep your stores open past seven. That's all I'm saying. Thank well, you. no, you're. you're <laughs> uh, no, it's true. So, and I sort of, so we're starting to see that. And I, I think last time I was here, I even talked about it. So we made, at the Business Journal, when I was editor, we made Donald Brand the business person of the year, yeah, which you can do every, every year. But the reason we did is because they made a big public play for Amazon's mm -hmm. second headquarters, 50,000 yes. jobs, yeah, that's right. 100,000. And we had no shot at that, basically being on the West Coast and yeah. other reasons. But he did it, I think, to send the message we're open, and it would have been a Donnie Brook. Everyone was already complaining about the traffic yeah, and what, right, you know, right. nimbyism. But it was a really smart PR play. Smart. I totally agree with that. And so people are aware of it. Like I said, you have companies, Emil Haddad at Five Point, they're building smaller and higher. So, mm -hmm. like you said, we can get those, not just workforce, which we need, right? Yeah. But also these smart Chapman, Soka, Cal State Fullerton graduates to. Think about staying here. Absolutely. Uh, what about the political landscape? Should we dive a little bit deeper? <laughs> sure. Well, uh, so we all know now, aren't it was an incredible flip for Republican seats in Congress, mm -hmm. flipped to Democrats. They spent crazy outside money, outspent the Republicans 15 to 1, and wow. they made Orange County the focal point if it, and widened their margin in Congress. I think. GOP has seven of 53 in yeah. California seats, mm -hmm. down to seven. Wow. And Duncan Hunter, uh, his kid is probably going to lose because he has problems. So it did flip. If you look at the registration numbers, it's not as if you know everyone who moves here or people have had this epiphany. They're, we're at the same now. When I moved here, the Republicans had a 20% edge in registration. Really? George H.W. Bush carried mm -hmm. uh, yeah. California because of Orange County, 300,000 mm -hmm. vote margin. What's happening, it's the, whether they're libertarian or decline the state, uh, they don't like uh, either party, but the Democrats have been good at, at spending the money, mm -hmm. picking out the vulnerable, took out Dana Rohrbacher, wow. 13, 15 sure term incumbent. Mm -hmm. uh, so our uh, Republicans still have four out of five on the Board of Supervisors, mm -hmm. even though it's a nonpartisan races, and the DA Todd Spitzer, and they have a number of seats up in Sacramento. I would just say this. Tom Umberg's a friend of mine. He's a uh, Democrat, just went back to the state Senate. He says, Pete, there's some committees. It's all we can, you know, there's maybe two. It's a 12-person committee. And I'll go back to what Peter Thiel said, uh, one of the original PayPal mafia. And sure. he left, remember, he left, famously left Silicon Valley. He says, when you have, um, you know, a monolith, we have one, only one party. You're not getting the range of ideas. Mm -hmm. It's true. And so I think it would be more healthy if uh, we had some balance. But by the way, that trend could continue in the Democrat favor. A number of these supervisorial seats could go Democrat. And that would affect, I'm not saying good or bad, but we have this mandate now. We've got to build housing. We all know about this. We have a shortage. Mm -hmm. So depending on the makeup, is it going to be more apartments, low income? Um, what happens with the airport mm -hmm. will be, you know, that's a big ongoing effort. conversation, Yeah, that's too. very interesting. The, uh, the homeless issue. Which so what do you think about, um, like, 
the increase in people who are like undecided voters or um, maybe third party voters, is that going to really change our political landscape? Or do you think they're going to, so for me, just for, for example, I used to be a Republican, I'm now a Libertarian, but I recognize... Come back in, the water's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but what I want to do is be able to step back and say, who do I like as a person mm -hmm. and as I a pol I don't want to be restricted to the party, right? Do you sure. think? Do you see that trend happening elsewhere? I do. do you? I do, especially. And the more local you get, uh -huh. it's it's about issues. Yeah. Sure. So you know, a lot of the local races are nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. Uh, but major changes. By the way, uh, it's it's not yet upon us, but just the way we vote in California mm -hmm. starting in 2020, right? The primaries in March, mm -hmm. and we know we've had the system where the top two, so it could be two top Democrats go into the runoff, but they're going to do away with most, you know, I could vote two blocks away. Every, everyone had a, now they're taking it down from like 1,000 to 150 places. You can vote days ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, no more at a machine. It's it's going There's to be no more machine. No more I mean, you can use, it, it's, it's entirely it's different. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know and that. then you also had that phenomenon in 2018 called ballot harvesting, where you used to have to turn in your own ballot. Mm -hmm. Now people can turn it in for you. A lot of allegations that that did help some of these Democrats only because those ballots get turned in late. They're called provisional, mm -hmm. and there were a number of those races where the Republican led on election night and then it completely flipped. That's interesting. But nothing's been worked through the courts, so. It, what happens, I think, also, when you get, we have term limits in California, mm -hmm. and certainly in the lower, um, many of the cities do. You can knock professional politicians, but also it makes the whole system is more and more run by the special interests and the ones who, that's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I do uh, like the idea of, I mean, I've always voted the person. I've mm -hmm. never really followed a party line, mm -hmm. there are party philosophies perhaps, but I am totally disgusted by this party over nation mm -hmm. kind of deal. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not okay with sure. that. So watching this shift really makes me happy. And I think mm -hmm. the changes, because there are a lot of people who can't get to the polls on voting day. Yes. So making The idea is to drive up, uh, drive up participation, mm -hmm. which yeah. I know some cynics say, I don't want the person who's not engaged voting. That's not fair. It's better. It's better. Yeah. We have very poor participation. Right. And well, Orange County is not. I think really anything that either. drives participation sure. is mm -hmm. going to give you a truer story because, like you said, why not have a balance of ideas? Why not have a true democracy mm -hmm. at play? I, I just. And if it, if it ends up being one party over the other because that's how it got voted, but right. everyone turned out and gave their, their opinion, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm not okay with people from a particular side being unable to actually access the system. Yeah, so that's totally a, a bigger hassle. Um, unfortunately, Pete, as all good things do, no, it comes to Can no. I throw up in 10 <laughs> seconds a quick kudos? The first annual Pete Weitzner Business Person of the Year. Her name is Cheryl Osborne. Okay. In this still pretty hot real estate sector, she started her own construction company, which back then she was an anomaly as a woman. 20 years running, sales were up 20% this year, but better than that. She was a business journal, Civic 50, uh, a Civic 50 honoree. She's always out there, big brothers, big sisters. And people, including millennials, love to come to work for her company because just as you mentioned, they're interested to get paid days off to work with Katarina's Club. Mm -hmm. That was over 10 seconds, but That's kudos no, to Cheryl. It's the first Cheryl. good day. The and first. She sounds like somebody we need to have I on the show. I was just going to say, yeah. let's do this soon. Yeah, Bring her, her back on. and let's talk about it and everything she's doing. And for you, I'd like you to come back and talk about niche television because I think that's what we're doing here. Absolutely. By creating a very, um, a very targeted message to a particular audience and your students, especially if they're running to Hollywood for the experience, I think there's opportunity for them to learn something right here. Niche, niche television, niche publishing. Yep, I know a guy at my right. tennis club, he publishes newspapers just for just little small developments, yep. high end, like Emerald Bay. Mm -hmm. But everyone, everyone will read it, and his advertisers not want to support it. Absolutely. So, so you're spot we've got on. conversations to have. We're not done with back. you, <laughs> Professor Pete. And I'm bringing my dog. And because you can bring your dog because Lauren I brought Rosky my dog. dog. <laughs> I did. Kudos. I did. And we will Libby. meet her. Hi, Libby. We'll meet her Melania later. Will join you next we'll meet time. her later in the show, and we'll have Melania, and we're going to be doing a, a pet adoption day in March. 
we're going to have a whole show on pet adoption and rescue. So we know you'll be back with Melania because she is just the, the epitome of a rescue. Landed on Balboa Island. There you go. Right. You never That's know. Right. Thank you so Amy, much. Amy, Lauren, thank you, so thank you both for Such having me. Such a pleasure. Happy holidays. Happy thank holidays. you. We'll be right back.